Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prestar Facts. This is an Answering Questions episode, so let's actually get right to it. Mike from Beaverton, Oregon, if I remember correctly. Uh, what are the main differences between Carcharodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus? Well, <clears throat> Carcharodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus have come from the basically the same kind of family of theropods. They're called Carcharodontosaurids. But even though they live in different continents, because Carcharodontosaurus lived in Africa, Giganotosaurus lived in South America, basically in Argentina. And so, the differences between Carcharodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus is that they're nearly identical, but even though uh, the skulls are kind of a little different. Uh, Giganotosaurus actually has more ridges on the, on the nasals, basically. So it has more ridges on the nasals, where Carcharodontosaurus has very few of them, and... I believe that the skull of Giganotosaurus is actually a little bit more robust than than uh, Carcharodontosaurus, so that would kind of make a little bit more sense. And considering that Giganotosaurus was probably hunting uh, like the big Argentinosaurus, and also probably taking on a Margosaurus as well. So considering that that uh, Giganotosaurus would actually be going after really large prey, Carcharodontosaurus could do the same thing. But even though um, uh, they actually, but even though Carcharodontosaurus was bit, had been able to actually capture smaller prey a little bit easier than what Giganotosaurus could, but even though Giganotosaurus could do could do okay with catching smaller prey, catching iguanodontids, but even though that's it's not really its style to actually go after. Uh, not the type of prey it would go after very often, but even though it would go after sauropods a little bit more than where Carcharodontosaurus would. And I think Carcharodontosaurus would actually be a little bit faster uh, than Giganotosaurus, so considering that it's a little bit light, it's a lighter built. And also, uh, Carcharodontosaurus is not as long as uh, Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus could actually reach between lengths of 40 to 45 feet, Whereas Carcharodontosaurus is pretty much nearly the same length as uh, as the largest Tyrannosaurus rex, and so you actually have uh, differences there where the length is actually a little bit different. The uh, Giganotosaurus would actually be a little bit taller uh, than Carcharodontosaurus. You know, I could go on and on about about this uh, type, kind of topic, but even though. Those are pretty much my main, pretty much the differences that I can actually see uh, between uh, Carcharodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus. Could there could there be a possibility that the that maybe Africa and South America were connected uh, around 110 million years ago? It's a possibility, but even though it, the evidence is actually suggesting that that they probably didn't. So they were probably still se they were probably separated, probably hundreds of miles apart, and so that would actually be the thing where basically there's some paleontologists to believe that her, that there might be a land bridge where basically like Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus might have actually interacted with each other uh, on occasion and basically like they went back and forth on in uh, South America and, and uh, Africa but even though if Giganotosaurus was if there was fossil evidence of Giganotosaurus we would have been able to find it in Africa but even though we can't so that actually kind of I think debunks uh, the land bridge theory is basically is that there's no evidence that Carcar that Giganotosaurus was actually even in Africa, and there's no evidence to support that Carcharodontosaurus was actually even in uh, South America. So that actually I think believes that completely debunks the theory that probably there may be the same species. But even though that I think that's that's just a bunch of baloney, and I think that probably. Uh, there's no evidence to support that. So even though they look similar, but even though that um, I think it's basically size and also um, the nasals, basically the size and the nasals would actually be um, the main differences between Carcharodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus. All right, Brenda from Morris, New York. I wanted to know who would win in a fight, Hyenodon or Smilodon? Well, let's see here. Hyenodon basically lived during the uh, Eocene and early Oligocene, and uh, their fossils can be found almost anywhere, basically from Asia, North America. The most common uh, hyenodon is actually hy hyenodon hortus, and so I'm just going to use hyenodon hortus, hortus 
and then basically smiled on Vitalis, which is basically the most uh, common uh, Smilodon that we can, that we actually find. And also, it's pretty much the most popular. And so, when we actually look at uh, Hyenodon, it's got a bite force. It's got bite force. So basically, it's got the stronger jaws, and uh, it's a smaller animal compared to um, uh, Smilodon. And so you would think it might be a little bit faster. And, uh, and of course, it's a creodontid. So basically, it's an early form of, of mammals, basically predatory mammals, uh, that basically that there's no common ancestor to them. So basically, they're, they're kind of like these bizarre uh, type of uh, predatory mammals and so on and so forth. And also, hyenodon's probably got, and hyenodon's got those... Uh, self-sharpening back teeth so basically those would actually be advantages for hyenodon it probably might be a probably might have uh some probably have the speed but when we actually look at smilodon fatalis smilodon actually has the bigger weaponry basically it has it actually has uh the large canines it actually has muscle power so basically it's very powerful uh it's a little bit more agile than than Hyenodon, so it could actually turn a little bit quicker uh, than Hyenodon, and and also it actually had and also basically uh, with Smilodon, uh, it wouldn't ha really necessarily have the speed uh, to actually probably win a foot race for a long distance, considering that like say if you actually have Hyenodon and Smilodon actually do like a 40 yard dash, the the Hyenodon would actually win out in terms of a long distance chase. Whereas Smilodon, it probably couldn't even actually run as fast past, probably past 20 yards. So basically, it would slow down uh, pretty quickly. And then so, uh, with uh, Smilodon, it actually has the power, it actually does have the weaponry. But also, there's a disadvantage to that kind of weaponry. Is basically, it has a very weak bite force. So basically, it would not have the bite force necessary to actually kill, uh, to actually kill with power. It would actually be more like a, more like a self-efficient way of actually do like a surgical technique. Basically, kind of using that skull to actually uh, get those uh, canines uh, into the flesh of the prey. But anyway, let's actually get down to the battle. What what I think, what why I believe who should win. Well, even though with smile with hyenodon being a smaller animal, I think smilodon is going to have a harder time to actually get a killing blow. So basically, the neck region is not really going to be the best place necessary to actually kill the hyenodon, and so you need to actually go after uh, probably like the rib cage basically to actually inflict nasty injury. And so I think probably with the disadvantage of those teeth, it probably couldn't actually do that. That smile line probably couldn't even do that uh, very well. And so a uh, smile line would actually have the power necessary to actually uh, to actually uh, use its paws to actually uh, dis to actually distract hyenodon from actually making a killing blow. But even though this could be actually evenly matched, where um, that uh, you actually have a hyenodon making some killing blows with its bite force, probably going after one paw to actually uh, make it non-usable, and then pretty much. Uh, but I think probably Smilodon would actually have the bit more energy to actually possibly win the battle, considering that it's a animal that actually lived. Um, uh, er, pretty much are further in time than Hyenodon, and basically Smilodon would actually have a bigger brain than Hyenodon, so pretty much Smilodon would actually be able to actually outsmart Hyenodon very easily. So I would probably suggest Smilodon would still win this battle. I would think it's because it has the power, it actually has the agility, but it also has the brain power to actually, to actually kind of kind of confuse Hyenodon a little bit more concerning that Hyenodon it was basically relying on instinct to actually to actually uh, kind of actually try to win a fight but even though instinct sometimes doesn't actually do very good against uh, 
a higher intellect. And so higher intellect would actually probably win this battle. I would probably say Smile Dawn would actually win the battle due to the fact that probably the Hyena Dawn would tire very quickly and also I think probably that it probably wouldn't actually go after places where it would actually strategize. It probably wouldn't, wouldn't strategize very well. So I'd probably say that that Smile Dawn would actually win this battle. All right, that's it for now. Now next week will actually be a special episode. So if so, let me know what kind of uh, dinosaur or any other prehistoric dinosaurs or any other prehistoric animals you want me to talk about. Feel free to email them to me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Or otherwise, go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Effects of Dino Chris. I got a bunch. I got a link to a bunch of dinosaur names, mammal names, sea, uh, marine reptile names, and any anything. Uh, mainly vertebrates that I want to talk about. I want to talk about vertebrates. Uh, so basically, let me know what kind of uh, dinosaurs or any other prehistoric animals you want me to talk about. I could do one or two. I have done three uh, in one episode. So basically, but if there's one that I'm actually gonna do like too much of, do a lot of information of, I can only do two. So basically, that kind of thing. But also, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or always go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions in the comment section on any Facebook post. But remember, to keep your questions short to the point. Don't use the messenger, I can't do that. And also, you can follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. Uh, that's my Twitter page, I post pretty cool stuff on there. Take care of the people around you, and also for younger people, let them reach to listen to parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivations you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education. Because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. Alright, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.